Sim Update 13 for Microsoft Flight Simulator is now available. One of the headline features is support for NVIDIA's upscaling technology at DLSS. But just how effective is it? Does it bring us any increased frame rates? Is there better performance? And how does it compare to non-upscaled footage? In this video, we're going to attempt to answer some of those questions, but do keep in mind that currently, right now, we are still awaiting on the latest drivers from NVIDIA. We will revisit this topic as soon as the new drivers are available. For now, this will give us a bit of an idea of how things currently stand, as well as serve as a record for us to compare back to later on. So, let's jump in. First things first then, how are we set up? Well, the first thing you're going to want to do is enable the developer mode. This is switched on, and yes, the mouse cursor does seem to be off-center. That appears to be due to the way OBS software captured this footage. At any rate, you need to enable developer mode and make sure that display FPS is switched on. We're then going to head on over to the graphics here. We're going to run in 4K for this comparison. You can see the anti-aliasing is set to a TAA at a scale of 100 right here. We're also going to go right down and make sure VSync is switched off to enable maximum frame rates and go for the default ultra graphical settings. I'm not going to change any of those settings there. All of that is now enabled. The comparison is going to be a run over the tried and tested New York. We're starting here at Governor's Island. To ensure that the test is fair, all settings are going to need to remain consistent across all flyers. So we're using a few clouds in the sky. We've got air traffic set to off. We're using the Cessna 172G1000 and the time is set to 1428 local. I'm also using a third party app called Flight Recorder which replays our flights and make sure that they are replayed in exactly the same way each time. To all intents and purposes then, every playthrough should be identical. So here we are flying over New York in the Cessna 172, using a TLAA at 100 as you saw at the beginning of the video. In terms of PC spec, I'm running on a Ryzen 7 5800X with an RTX 3080, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and the uh, SIM is installed onto a Samsung 980 Pro NVMe. Now, I'm also aware that when it comes to Microsoft Flight Simulator, the lower to medium spec RTX cards tend to see a much better benefit when it comes to a DLSS. The, uh, the uh, 3080 here will probably see a slightly less benefit. Now, I was going to include footage from my other computer, which is an RTX 2080 Super roughly equivalent to an RTX 3060 Ti. However, for some reason, the Sim Update 10 isn't working very well on that PC at all. As soon as I go into the graphics options, it crashes the desktop. That's with a fresh install and the latest Nvidia drivers. So no idea what's going on there, but something to have a look at later. Also, in terms of drivers, I'm currently using the latest available Nvidia drivers, 516.94. Later drivers should be coming out that will officially support Microsoft Flight Simulator, the DirectX 12 improvements, as well as some better improvements for DLSS. So we'll be coming back to this video again to have a look at that. And that will be an opportunity to dive in and have a look at just how much benefit we get from the RTX 2080S. At any rate, that's the full flight pretty much here on flying over New York. We can see right here at the end that we're getting right down to a sub 20 frames a second. So not all that good. Well, let's see how much benefit we get, if anything, with using the LSS. Another thing worth mentioning here, quite important in fact, is that right here we're using the LSS 2.0. Just for clarity's sake, the latest version, just to save any confusion, or the new version, upcoming version, the LSS 3.0, will be officially supported only by the RTX 4000 series graphics cards, which, of course, I don't have. So, what benefit are we getting here? Let's bring in that TLAA footage to find out. Immediately then, we can find out that there is indeed a performance benefit, and that is despite being bound by the CPU. So we're gaining around about 11 frames per second here on average, which works out to around about a 25% gain. That is certainly nothing to complain about. Now, further into the footage, you may remember that we had a very low dip in frame rates, so let's jump to that section. Here then, the benefit is even more pronounced. For some reason, the sim did struggle a little bit with this area, just dipping down to 25-26 frames a second, and indeed a little bit lower even further on. 
Meanwhile, all of the uh, quality uh, DLSS set in uh, doesn't seem to have uh, really any issue at all here. In terms of fairness then, I went back and refilmed the TLAA section. On the additional fly-throughs, the frame rates were consistent, with the exception they didn't get this strange dip as we approach Central Park. So, as you can see, a slightly fairer comparison, but NVIDIA DLSS at the quality setting still wins out. Okay, so talking of quality, let's take a look at image quality. I think it's fair to say at this setting, there's very little to no difference between a DLSS quality and a TLAA at render scale 100. That said, there is still some issues when it comes to the glass cockpit displays inside the planes, but this should hopefully be rectified with the new NVIDIA drivers. Right, moving through the video a little quicker, let's move away from ultra settings and compare high-end settings. Again, we're using DLSS at a quality setting and TLAA at a render scale of 100. And immediately, you can see there's an absolutely dramatic difference here. Again, there's virtually a negligible difference in terms of image quality. So yeah, nothing really to lose here and everything to gain. A significant performance boost. Moving on to changing the DLSS setting. Here we are on the balance setting. Now, at least on my setup here on the RTX 3080, there doesn't really seem to be any benefit in dropping down to this particular setting. This will be something for a much better test on my other setup, the RTX 2080 S. So that's something for the next video once we get that crash to desktop problem fixed that I mentioned earlier on. So for the balance setting, image quality isn't too different. I think it's noticeably less sharp, but still very good overall. My general conclusion then, at the moment, DLSS has definitely helped, well worth the upgrade. Of course, it will depend and factor into the equation of whether or not you have access to an RTX card. Additionally, this will bear further testing once I've got access to a Microsoft Flight Simulator on my RTX 2080. And for that, I'm going to have to get that crashed desktop issue fixed. Hopefully, we can do that sooner rather than later. Do let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comments section below. Have you tried out DLSS and have you seen any gain in frame rates? What's your feeling in general? Do you think there's too much of a degradation in image quality if you choose the ultra performance setting or is it generally overall very good? Do let me know below. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.